Let's take a look at another circuit configuration and see how the root 3 will be applied properly here. So in this instance, we will have a Y-connected source on a three-phase circuit feeding a single-phase load. And just like on our last problem, we'll just keep it simple and solve for power at the load. Now, when we say single-phase load on a three-phase system, you should be asking yourself, is this connected line-to-line -line or line-to-neutral? Now, let's say our particular problem is line-to-neutral. And to contrast that, just to make sure we're clear, let me show you a line-to-line -line example. So, line-to-line uh, -line connection would look something like this. Very obvious, seeing the difference between line and neutral connection there. A quick thing to remember here is that line-to-line -line values are the larger ones, and line-to-neutral values are the smaller ones. And what I mean by that is this. If line-to-line -line would equal 480 volts, which is very common, then line-to-neutral would equal 277 volts. And we see very easily that these two values are at a difference of root 3. Another common one, very obvious, is 208 volt line-to-line -line, with 120 volt being line-to-neutral. Yet again, a, root, a factor of root 3 in between. We all know this. I know that this is very basic stuff, but I just want to be clear, so that's why I'm saying this. Another obvious thing to make sure we're all on the same page about is the way these things are written and the way they're spoken about. Line-to-line -line can be notated with all of these options. And line-to-neutral can be notated with all of these options. Saying line-to-line -line or line-to-neutral can at, uh, at times be a mouthful, as I'm struggling with already. So often, they're just called line and phase. And sometimes, and uh, probably inappropriately, they're called l just line and neutral. But uh, to keep those distinguished, we're going to try and keep uh, consistent here with line and phase, or line-to-line -line and line-to-neutral. Okay, enough of that. Let's move uh, to the particular factors involved for us to be able to solve for power at the load. As in our previous video, we discussed the three factors necessary to be able to work with the root 3 with these particular types of equations. If you recall, the first factor is what is the source. And here, it's obvious we've said we have a Y source. The second factor is what is the load. And here, we have a single-phase load, and it's on a three-phase system, but we have a, a single-phase load, and it's connected line to neutral, as we've been discussing. The third factor are the givens um, for, this, uh, for this circuit. And let's, let's uh, supply them here. We'll say that we have a 35-amp line current, and we have 12.5 kV line voltage. Okay, a good way to see that phase current matches the line current is to notice that the current is not diverted by any other branch along the way to the load. In our last example, it was very clear that the phase voltage and the line voltage matched, and now we're dealing with the uh, current in this particular situation. And uh, with this Y connection, um, it can be maybe a little confusing to see that. So a good way to help visualize that the phase voltage and the, or rather the phase current and the line current match, is to uh, visualize it in opposition to the way a delta connection might look. When we see a delta connection, we can see that the current can be diverted in one of two ways um, on the route. Uh, en route to, to the load. So I'm just going to give you a quick example of what that would look like here. So you see on, on the source, the current traveling to the load can be split off in one direction or the other. And uh, so that's uh, a more uncertain certain uh, circumstance than what we're dealing with here. So with phase uh, current being provided, we know that uh, or rather, with, with line current being provided, we know that we have a matching phase current as well. So, 
So we're solving for power at the load. Now remember, like the previous video, we will still employ the root 3 factor in the formula, but here the key is, where's the root 3 coming from? Before, in our previous video, it was coming from the current. Now, it's coming from the voltage. OK, but back to our problem in question. Because the load is connected line to neutral, we need the phase voltage. Now, recall what we just said about what these connections are called. Line to neutral connections are called phase connections. So this means we need to convert the given line voltage to phase voltage. And from our last video, we saw that line values are the larger values, while the phase values are the smaller ones. So this indicates to us that we must divide by root 3 to get the smaller value. Here, we're moving from large to small. This is the most important thing you can understand about using the root 3 from these videos we've made. You can't just stick a root 3 on the end of your formula and expect to get the correct answer every time. So, starting with the general power formula, let's substitute in the correct variables with the root 3 that we've been talking about. And then we can apply the given numbers of our problem so that we can do the calculation. And here, make sure and watch out for the kilos and the megas of your givens. Remember, we've got 12.5 kilovolts, so that's why that's there. And the rest of the equation is pretty easy. You can just plug into your calculator and get the answer. And as Dennis Reynolds says, boom. <laughs>